Welcome back everyone. This video is going to be about LaTeX document classes, outlining your document, and a little bit about the syntax of the language as a markup language. So there are at least three, I mean uh, four different document classes that I am aware of um, that I'm sure there's more but of just some of the basic functionality that I understand, there's article, report, book, and Beamer. So Beamer is basically like LaTeX, but PowerPoint. You're basically making slideshows and they're a little bit more interactive um, in certain ways than just your default PowerPoint, I think. Um, but a lot of the capability and power of LaTeX can be done in a slideshow type format. Um, I plan to do Beamer as a document class uh, in a separate separate video. So I'll just stick with sort of like the uh, printed text type document classes. So that would be article, report, and book. Now, there are a specific amount of like sectioning you can do in your LaTeX documents. One thing to note is that the higher level you are in the um, sectioning, certain classes don't use certain sections. So in order, we have, I believe, again, if I ever get anything wrong, just correct me in the comments. I'm still learning all this too. But the highest level, I believe, is part, which is utilized in both report and book. Then after part, we have chapter. So those two are utilized by report and book. So if you're doing something very, very long form, you might want to do um, you know, parts and chapters for your books. And in article, you can't use either of these. So that's why it's displaying a little weird. Um, normally part displays differently than this. So I'll actually comment out article and we'll look at it when it's in a book format. So in book format, the part one gets its own separate page and then chapter one eventually right here gets its own page like this so this is how it looks differently now you saw that part one displayed a little bit in article um, man might be wrong and maybe part does work in article but chapter doesn't so at least in book we have these two options uh, set here so I'm gonna comment these out um, actually I will comment out book and report. So report, same thing, part and chapter. We get the same functionality available to us. So going back to article, I'm going to comment these out so we can look at the other ones. In article, we have the bulk of what you probably will be doing. Now using those other ones is like if you're making very long form type documentation, if you're literally writing a book or writing a you know 100 plus page thesis or some long scientific report, uh, you might utilize those more. But if you're going to just write something, you know, medium or short form, you're probably just going to use the following sections. And this is all like how to outline your document from largest sections to most granular pieces. So after chapter, we would have section. After section, we have um, subsection. After subsection, we and you can see how it's automatically numbering. Now everything in LaTeX is customizable, so we could easily do stuff with that. Um, but after subsection, we have one more sub subsection. All right. So after our sections, we also have um, paragraph. I'm not sure if I even have a hotkey for. I do sub paragraph so each of these is just one other little bit of sectioning something off now what I have typically been using is really just the sections and then t free text afterwards so I could put um, you know text after you know what ignore the package I'm using uh, 
because this is just easier to get something to display. So I'm going to do some text there in section one, and then I can just do some right there. There we go. So when we start doing our sectioning, you can see how we can break up our document into nicer chunks and pieces, subparagraph, paragraph. Uh, I don't really like the paragraph sections very much, so I would typically just tend to write in my sections, subsection and sub subsections, and have stuff like this. But it is useful to know that these options exist. Uh, one really cool thing about you actually using these outlining pieces is that if we did a table of contents, so I'm going to do a couple things here. Do table of contents and then page break because I don't want a page underneath it. Da, 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 da. There we go. So by automatically using those section tags, I have a table of contents that is interactive and good looking. Now, as we get more and more stuff in our contents, this will you know fill out and fill itself up. Um, but the paragraph tags are also not included in that. Now, I'm sure that there is an option to customize that and add that in just based on the level of table of contents you want to appear. And you can probably do that. Again, I don't really care for the paragraph tags, but possible. Now, I will get into this a little bit more uh, in later videos because I have already done this in my own template where you can also have um, a basically a table of contents for your figures and a table of contents for your tables. And the way I have my document template set up is that I have my table of contents, figures, and tables right after each other, each on their own page. And that's how I like things. I just want my lists of stuff right in the beginning before we start getting to the actual meat of the document. And then towards the end of my document, I have all of my references and my appendix. So just based on um, the goal of this video, we have long form type report our document classes of report and book. And in article, we can take advantage of pretty much everything that we could in the other two, except for the part and chapter pieces. Now, as you start typing something and writing a very large and long document because your content's gonna grow and grow and grow, it does help to section off your document. Now, one thing you can do is you can actually, um, kind of like if you've ever done any sort of programming in C, or if you just understand the concept of a header file or just referencing a file to drop its uh, contents into another file, what we can do is we can reference an external tech document. Now, this is LaTeX, but an external LaTeX document. Uh, I believe the command is input. Let me double check here. Uh, it is input. Okay. And include tech file. All right. So if I was going to uh, input.tech. And then in here, so because we're inputting this, we don't need to specify a preamble, no document class, begin or end document. Uh, you just input your LaTeX writing. So in this case, I'm just gonna do a section. This is my input section. And then here is my content. Now, I don't have my use package reference in here for blind text, which is just the lorem ipsum text, but because this is going to, basically the, all of this document is gonna be dropped into my main one in, by reference, I don't need to. I should just be able to drop this content in, and because this main document uses that package, when the content is dropped in, it should work as expected. So I'm just gonna put that there, save it, and now, I'm going to put it right at the end over here. I'm just going to do input braces and I'm going to do input.tech. And so I have live compilation going. And so down here, here we go. There's the content. This is my input section. Here's my content and then the lorem ipsum text. My table of contents dynamically updating now includes this new section as well. 
Now, one really cool thing about this is that if you have a long form document in a folder or directory, you could have another directory, a nested directory for all of your images, a nested directory for a custom bib file for your bibliographical references for that document in a separate directory. And you could have a separate directory for all of your you know, large sections or chunks of text and just have a skeleton LaTeX document as in your root directory that references all of these external resources in these other directories all inside one main project folder. And in this way, you can keep your long, long or medium form documentation easily separated out, organized, and make it easier to update and edit. And again, one of the great things about the extensible and beautiful markup language that is LaTeX is that it is plain text, just like Markdown, which means we could also put it under GitHub version control. And that gives you the option to roll things back should you make some sort of catastrophic error. So in this uh, example, really all I wanted to show was that you have all of these basic section headings for making the outline of your document. You can have other pieces dropped into this outline and that can have other pieces in of itself. You have separate document classes that give you additional functionality or uh, additional pieces that you can work with. I'm just going to uncomment that, comment that out, get myself that and that, and then and there we go. Chapter one has its own little header there and part one it takes its own page, so there's not really any reason to do that. But I digress. This is a great way of outlining your document, separating and dithering out other pieces so that you can keep better tabs on a long or medium form document and some of the classes you have available to you. I will cover, cover Beamer in a separate video another time. But in the meantime, enjoy that.